in the singing, the guitarist, the drummers, the singer. Man, I said, we can go home now. <laughs> we're filled. We're filled. Praise you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. My brothers and sisters, the Lord has always been so good to me. I'm praying this morning. I was thanking the Lord for each and every one of you. The ones I associate more with, the ones we just visit here in church. But I was thinking, Father God, any, any of our church family could sit up here and give a good teaching. Because we have a book, our lifestyle book, that will be bestsellers. And because of that anointing and the uh, Pharisees of my teaching here is the anointing and authority of the believers. We all are anointed and are believers when we accept Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 There comes a lot of promises, a lot of anointing, a lot of authority that we never see in the Word, the manual he left us for to teach us how to live because we don't make time. We're so busy with daily cares of the world that we don't make time. So make time. Prioritize Amen. so that you can have that blessing, that anointing, that authority that the Lord gives us. Like he said in the word, he said, you and your household will be saved. He said, and what Jesus did on earth, you can do yes, in my name. Yes. That and more than when he walked on earth. Right. Praise you, Father God. Thank Amen. you, Jesus. I love quotes, and I try to learn, even at my age, at 75, from everything I can get my hands on. Good books quotes, the Bible, partly TV with Westerns with Pete and myself, and we still learn from those. We still learn from everything that we're willing to learn. We have to be willing to, to learn like uh, my brother here said, when we lean on the Lord. You have to be able to lean on Him, not try to do everything yourself and praise God that He didn't leave us here to do everything ourselves. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Some try Sometimes we are so responsible that we believe we have to do it all. As a parent, as a mother, a father, as a worker in a workplace, we feel we have to do it all. We have to be perfect. But that's when pride sets in. When you're 100% sure that you're a good parent, that you're good at your work, that you're good at church, then pride sets in. But you have to remember who you are and who you lean on. Yes, we lean on Jesus, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So we're never alone. We're never alone, and never take credit for what you have done, what you had accomplished on a daily basis, because somebody out there is watching you and Amen. taking care of you and, and doing for you. One of my favorite quotes here, it says, talent is given, greatness is earned. Yes. Never let a bad day make you feel like you've had a bad life. We all have bad days, we all have circumstances, trials and tribulations, but it always comes back to It'll be better tomorrow. After the rain comes the rainbow. After the snow, ice on the ground. Uh, our friend here, Scott, had to go see what the world was all about after 21 driving. You had to go see something further down. So we're always learning. You have to take it as learning. So before I continue quotes, I have to start going to other words that we have to show us to tell yourself. We're our best cheerleaders like I've spoken before. You have to be your own encourager. Don't depend on anybody to encourage you, to make you feel better. Right. You have to be your own encourager, your own cheerleader. And some of the words I wrote down for me that I use for Pete and myself, we said, words can build you up or tear you down. Right. You decide. You decide. Even as little children, like my fellow Christian and, and here little Hector, you, your parents can teach him how to, words can build you up every day. When you're at your worst, you have to get yourself up and say, hey, this is not a bad day. It's a bad moment, but I'll make it better in Jesus' name. Amen. Because you know that he's there to help you. Words can bring life or can bring death. You can always say, I'm so hurting, I'm ill here, I'm sorry. And I said, no. He's the healer, the word. Always go back to the word. What does the word say? The word says that God is my healer, he's my redeemer, he's my, my savior. So you have to get back to what we know, that we know that we know. And it says word, words can bring confidence or can cause fear. And you know where fear comes from? The enemy. Amen. Everything that is negative comes from the enemy. So learn how to listen to both voices. The voice of the enemy and he's always on top of you trying to steal, kill, and destroy. Or my heavenly father is such a gentleman 
that he loves for us to come and humble ourselves and ask for help. So always don't feel that, well, I can't even ask for what shoes to wear or what dress to wear or what I'm going to do today to please somebody. Always be there to answer the call by the word and by humbling because the more we humble ourselves to the Lord, the more we learn and the blessings will be more and Amen. more. And more. Because the word says we go from glory to glory. Yes. So that's what we're made of. Do not speak negative about yourself and others. Positive, positive, positive. In Proverbs 12, 14, he says, From the fruit of his work, um, a man shall be satisfied with good. Yes. From Amen. the fruits. Amen. Okay, let's start with the, the anointing. When we accept Jesus Christ and Lord and Savior, he's such faithful and glad that we accept and we confess our sins. We accept that he died on the cross for our sins to pay a debt that he did not owe for you and me. So that we could have, like I say it, our cake and eat it too. Yes, not just yes. half of what it is or struggle, but to have our cake and eat it too. But we have to know our creator. We have to know our savior. Yes. We have to know our redeemer. We have to know the word. He didn't leave us here in the middle of the, of the prairie with ice or snow or hot. He left us a manual. We will make time to study it on a daily basis, the way we prioritize TV or having a good time or whatever else aids you. This is what we have to go to. The first one on anointing is in uh, Psalms 20, verse 6. I like to always have each one of you go there so we'll get used to the routine of reading the word, Amen. getting it in our mind and in our hearts. So it'll be in our computer, I call it. So when we need it, it'll come out automatically. Amen. Automatically it'll come out because we have it here and we have it here. And when we're putting it in, it doesn't seem that we're learning anything or it doesn't mean anything to us. But when we need it, it's here and here. Amen. Okay, in Psalms 26, it says, Now this I know, the Lord gave victory to his anointed. He anoints us with power. He anoints us with help. He anoints us what we need on a daily basis. Even if we take it for granted or we don't, but we are anointed. We are his anointed, the word says. His anointed. He chose to anoint his children, he said. He answered him from his heavenly sanctuary with the victorious power of his right hand. Amen. We're not just anybody out there, brothers and sisters, we're somebody. We're special in his eyes and ours. The word says we are magnificently made, greatly and good works he did when he created us. So take that, take that for your mind and your heart to be able to carry on a daily basis what you're supposed to learn. Amen. Amen. On the same uh, Psalm 23, and it's verse 5. It says, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. If you would just study scriptures, and it takes me longer to study because I have my a concordance, I have my dictionary, I have to define every single word so that it will really flow in me and make me understand what my Heavenly Father, the Creator of Heaven and Earth, has done for you and me, Amen. and He just gave it to us. And we're so close-minded sometimes that we don't make time to receive what was given to us for free. You know, when there's something like last night on the CD, party that they have here at USO, it was free. Supper, folkloric dancers, Santa Claus for the children. It was free. I'm sure a lot of people went. And this is the same thing or more that the Lord did for us oh, when yeah, he yeah, created yeah. us. Yeah. He created us to give us free gifts that we don't even know because we don't study the word, we don't look into it. And when you learn this, you feel complete you feel the puzzles complete to be able to carry your cross all the way until Jesus takes us home. And like our friend, brother Scott said, 
to live in heaven forever. I understood when he wanted to cry how Jesus died on the cross for you and me. Yes. To give us what? Everything on earth, because in heaven we weren't going to need it. Amen. In heaven it's perfect. Yes. It's done. It's forever. For eternity, it says. So this is a manual to learn how to live in this world. In this world. And serving him at the same time. Serving him at the same time. Okay, in Psalms, it's another real good one, 45, 7. It says here in 45, 7, Psalm, it says, You love righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore, God, your God has set you above your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy. Yes, amen. God has anointed us with the oil of joy because when we accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, even more, even before we read the Bible and weren't even saved, we know what's right and wrong. We just choose what to do. And sometimes we choose the wrong thing, but the consequences, then you want to blame every Tom, Dick, and Harry for your consequences instead of saying, hey, I decided to do, make this decision so the consequences go with it. And the same here, the word says, you love righteousness and hate wickedness. Even if you have best friends or where you associate, where you work, they try to lure you to do what is wicked, to do what is wrong, you know, you know what's right and wrong. So take that authority, that anointing to say, no, thank you. To be able to be above what is wicked because we're somebody special. We're the children of a king, of the king of king and lord of lords, he says, we are special in his eyes. The word says we're the apple of his eyes. So act like it. We go by what people's only see, and they're always looking for us, what, to fail? Why? Because they think they're better than anybody else. They think they're Christians. They're better. They know better. Let's see what they're going to do in these circumstances. So you have to stand up for what you know and who you are. Yes, in Jesus' yes. name. In Jesus' name. Okay, let's try it. I have a whole bunch, I guess I wrote the whole Bible here, but let's go to authority. Let's go to authority. I was telling Wick and Carla this morning, I said, I was really getting ready this morning, just praising the Lord. Man, I get after it in the morning. Then I said, Joyce Myers, watch out. So when he gives you the authority, let's go to Matthew 16, 19. Matthew 16, 19, and said, <clears throat> He will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth, you will bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth, will be loose in heaven. Then he ordered the disciples to tell everyone that he was the Messiah. What that entitles to is when you pray, you have the authority that the creator of this earth, God, gave you through Jesus on the cross, through the Holy Spirit, to take authority and say in every situation, in every problem, in every trial, in every battle, because we live in a, in a place where there's always going to be trials and tribulations, and you say, Father God, in Jesus' name, it is written. And I try to memorize a few of the scriptures that it is written that I can bind whatever is going on at the moment. Us, we had the heater broke this last week. Oh, no. And, and we were saying, Father God, in Jesus' name, we just bind that problem, that spirit of, of the heater being broken, Father God, and let us take it the way you would show us to take it, peaceful and joyful. Okay. My husband went out to turn off the water because we couldn't find an knob to turn it off, and the heater didn't have one. It was broken. So we didn't have the right tools to turn off the water and yes. praise the Lord. Our Heavenly Father placed an angel in our midst, a neighbor that we never visit, we never see him. He ran and just helped Pete to turn off the water. Praise the Lord. Amen. When you're peaceful and joyful, God will fight your battles for you. Amen. God will fight your battles for you. We started texting different ones to come and help us out. 
Everybody was working, everybody was busy, and the water was running to the bathroom. And I told Peter, as long as it's not you and me, every thing has a remedy in this world. God will fight the battle, and he knows why. I said, praise the Lord, we might get a heater and carpet for Christmas. Who knows? Yeah. You have to think positive, even on the trials and tribulations as you go on, because there will be in this world yes. trials and tribulations, so you have to know how to handle them. In Matthew 28, 18 and 19, They worshipped him. I started at 17. They said, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to you. That's where it's written. So always pray, it is written. It is written that he gave us all authority. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to us. Why? Because we're good people. We go, do good deeds. No, my brothers and sisters, because of Jesus on yes. the cross. Because of Jesus on the cross, we can have our cake and eat it too, the way I say. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. But it says, going back again, it says, He... In 18, he said, then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to you. Thank you, Jesus on the cross. Not because I can do it or you can do it. And I always pray with my praise and worship team. I said, if it was possible, you and I can do it. But God is the God of the impossible. Amen. So we're going to get it done together. Our Heavenly Father and ourselves, we can get it everything done. It doesn't matter who, what, when, and where. He loves us all the same. He made us all the same. He gives us the authority and the anointing all the same. What we do with it is by choice and even in one of my scriptures I have, my people will perish for lack of knowledge. Right. Lack of knowledge of the word because we don't know the word. When you work in a profession, you have to study and do it daily. You get better at your job, you get better at doing things, you have more confidence in yourself. The same is with the life in Christ. You have to read the manual he left for us so you can be the best you know, that God has intended for you to be. Because his destiny is manifested by how much you learn and that he's already given you a destiny. But what we do with it, sometimes we don't choose to study the word because we don't make time. Yes. So we'll never have all that is created free for us Amen. in this manual. Right. So it's up to the individual. Sometimes you say, well, how come that one's blessed more than me? Or how come that one can do that? Or how come? Because they talk to the Lord daily. They study their word. They do their time. The, the priorities set, are set to do what? To get in a good relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. The way you know your mate, the way you know your mother and father, if you've had one still, the way you know somebody, the more you spend time with somebody, you know their weaknesses, their strengths, you know what they can, you can count on them and they can count on you. This is what the Lord wants from his children because he doesn't need anything we have. He's got it all. He's a lot in abundance. But we can have everything that he has for us if we just learn how to stand our tank, uh, extend our hand and be obedient to the word that he says you have to be obedient and to be obedient, you have to study and know what is obedient for you, the commandments. Yes. You know, the Lord's Prayer on a daily basis. There are some choices and consequences that we have here that is for us openly, and he will give us always free will. And the enemy will keep pushing, pushing, pushing to try to make you sin, to, so you will be killed, steal, and destroyed. He'll kill, steal, and destroy your relationships, your finances, your health, Everything that the Lord has given you for free, he'll come and destroy it because we choose, we choose to listen to that word and go by what that word says, yes. not by what we know who we are in Christ. Because we're believers and we're strong. 
and we're faithful to learn and God has given us the intelligence that, that only he had chosen each one of us to know through the Holy Spirit. But we're all in the same boat trying to do to get to where we're going, which is heaven. But in the meantime, we can enjoy by having the cake and eating it too. Here's another one. Lord. My One of my favorite ones is Luke 10, 19. 10, 19 is it and it says, Luke 10, 40, it says, I have given you the authority Listen, my brothers and sisters, I have given you the authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the powers of the enemy, which is Satan. Nothing will harm you. However, do not rejoice that the Spirit submits to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. He has given us this authority. So anytime I pray or get into a confidence, say, Father God, in Jesus' name, I stand on the authority given to me in Luke 10, 19, that this is going to get done in Jesus' name. And it gets done. A pain here and there, a problem that seems not to get solved with our grandchildren, our children and great-grandchildren. Our baby grandchild was born three months ago, and the first week he was born, he had to go into the hospital. The doctors oh. couldn't find out what was wrong with him, but I stood on... Luke 10, 19, where God has given the authority to bring health to that child. Yes. If he was created to be born, he has a destiny in this world and nothing and no one is going to steal it away in Jesus' name. Yes. Yes. But yes. you have to know who you are and the authority you have to control. And it's a bad word to say to control, but to control the problems that the enemy tries to feed you on a daily basis so will you will not succeed in every area of your lives. And you will succeed when you know the authority, our King of King and Lord of Lord gives each one of us in either grades, the little children, us in our jobs, in our finances, with our relationships. All of us have a destiny to fulfill, and we have to pray that destiny for our children, our grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. Father God, in Jesus' name, your destiny be manifested. Yes. Because I would try to tell my children how to live or to work, how to act, <laughs> then I, until I saw this destiny, there's a destiny he has for us, and he never makes mistakes like Scott was saying. So now I entrust my children, thank you, Father God, because your destiny will be manifested in my children. I do not have to worry about my children. They're saved, they're uh, going to follow you, they will have the authority and the anointing that the word stays for my children. I claim that every day in Jesus' name because they will serve the Lord. They're serving Him now, but they will serve it to God's potential when they study the word the way they should. Amen. So just claim that for your children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, your friends, your neighbors, even your enemies. There's times that you see people that don't say hi to you in town and be said, I wonder why that lady didn't say hi. I said, I'm sure she had a thousand problems on her mind what to cook for lunch, her husband wasn't a good one this morning, you know, who knows? I said, but it's good that we saw that, so we're praying for that person. Because you never know what somebody carries. You never know what somebody carries on, on their shoulder. But in the end, I saying, well, look at that one. She didn't say hi to you. She's been in town living. Maybe she doesn't like you. Maybe you're not good enough. <laughs> the heck with it. Yeah. You know, I know who I am in Christ. And he knows that I know, that I know, that I know, that I know. In my spirit, who I serve, who I belong to, what I'm going to do, nothing and nobody will ruin my day, my time, my blessings, my finances, my health. Nobody, because I know who I am, who I serve, and the authority and anointing that he gives each one of us. Not just me, each one of us. And we can learn it now, even at, at the age of Christian and little Hector. Because that's when they're rooted in the bottom and they will not have half of the problems we did because we didn't know her, right. that there was a many for us. So claim that for your children, your grandchildren, Addie, all of them, because they have a destiny. They have a destiny. And if they were created, they were created for a purpose. Yes. Nobody's a mistake. Nobody's a mistake. They're created for a purpose to have his destiny in this world to walk on earth and have like I say, his cake and eat it too. His cake and eat it too. I was reading a book and it said this. It says, it was God talking to his children. He says, talk with me 
about every aspect of your day. And I was adding on to the book, because since I know better, you know, I add on even to books. And I said, not just on bad days, but every day. Talk to him about your good times, your smiles, your dream, your happy days. Yes. When you have good moments, it, and it says, the book says, including your feelings. Remember that your ultimate goal is not to control or fix everything. And that was my ultimate goal, to correct everybody's problem, because I was a very responsible woman. So man, I had to get in there and fix everybody's problem, especially my children, whether they wanted it or not. Yes. You know, and finally you learn to let our Lord find your battles for you because he'll never make a mistake. Amen. And I make mistakes every single day and praise the Lord for Jesus on the cross that I have grace, that I have favor, that I have blessings. Not because I am, because I'm the worst sinner, but because of Jesus on the cross. And I know that, that I know in my Nora, I know that. And the book says, remember that your ultimate goal is not to control or fix everything around you. It is to keep communing with me. A successful day is one in which you have stayed in touch with many things that remain undone at the end of the day. Do not let your to-do list, written or mental, become an idol directing your life. And that struck a, a bind on me for this teaching because it said, even when you're occupied with your daily chores, that can become an idol instead of spending time with him. <coughs> 15 minutes here, bless you. 15 minutes there, 15 minutes there. You have to make time for the Lord. Yes, you have to make time for the reading of the word. You have to make time the way you do. What would it pay to have a clean kitchen and you died tonight instead of the Lord had put in your heart to pray for a neighbor, to call a neighbor that was sick, no, you were busy doing worldly things that they do need to be getting done, but sometimes you decide, you and the Lord, if it's an idol, everything that we do on a daily basis. And that God hates because a lot of things are idols. Money, sex, girlfriends, our children. If you love your children more than God, that can be an idol. So you and the Holy Spirit decide if you have idols in your lives. You and the Lord need to talk. Instead, ask my spirit to guide your moments by moments. We will keep close to me and he will keep you close to me. So every day, I remember my mother had a little booklet that was named Los Quince Minutos. I'm sure some of us with old parents like mine have the book. It meant it was a Spanish booklet that you would spend 15 minutes reading the book. And that's all it took, but it would say, the Lord talking to you, he said, what kind of a day did you have like this letter? Was it a good one? Was it a bad one? How can I help you with? What can I do for you today? Wow. And, and, and are, you just come to me when you need problems, when you have problems. Why don't you come to me when you had a good time at the dance? Or you had a good visit with a friend? I like to hear your good times and not just your needy times. Yes. So I like to be a companion on your walk with you on a daily basis to share your life with me. I don't need anything you have, but that time that you spend with him, visiting with him, loving him, praising him. The Lord says to praise him and worship him. That's all he's asking from his children, to praise him and worship him. And we had a blessed praise and worship team this morning. And I applaud you because... I know that I know that God is using each one of you for a time like this. Each anointed person here is anointed. Each one of you is anointed and has a, the best story to tell. I tell Pete, I said, we all could write bestsellers books according to the life we've led. And we all could give great testimonies of what God has done in our lives on a daily basis. Some of them we remember, some of them we take for granted. But we need to know in our knower whose we are, whose we belong to, who we can turn to in a time of uh, a, a daily basis living in this world. Now I was thinking, I said, Father God, and for your birthday? I said, it's Jesus' birthday coming up. Who's ready? What have you done? I said, I'm sure your credit cards are maxed trying to give every time they can Harry gives that they won't like 
to try to expand too much that you might have to want. To show people you love them. And for the one that created you, what are we going to do for him? He doesn't want our money. He's got everything in this world that he could want. But I was asking the Lord, I know, but I want you to tell me. A smile to a lady at, at a drugstore, at a shopping store in, in town that des doesn't smile. Have you ever seen people that don't smile with a ugly face? You say, oh, wonder what I did to her. It's not my fault that she's not as good looking as me. Or, you know, that's what I say. But I know how to live. You know, I've learned with age. But I say, Father God, maybe she's going through something that I could help her with. Yes. So you try to smile to that person and start praying for them. Yes. Father God, whatever is their need, I have the authority in, in the book, Luke 10, 19, that I have the authority. Fill her with everything she needs, Father God. That the Holy Spirit would fill her with discernment, alertness, sharpness, to know how to ask and talk to Jesus the way I've learned. You have a responsibility to your fellow man. That's why he left in the book, to love your neighbor as yourself. You just don't know what that person carries Amen. on a daily basis. You don't know. Or get pick up the phone and call somebody that you know have been sick, a chatting, or played on Christmas to take to somebody. Surprise somebody. There's a lot of things you can do for Jesus Amen. as gifts for him on his birthday. And he'll bless you more just because you did it in his name, not because we did it because... You have to earn heaven, or you have to just stand by there and just as, act holier than thou. No, you have to do it because you know who you are. A king that created you, you're the child of the king. This is his birthday coming up. So even the little ones, they don't have to have money to spend. They can just help out their families a little more today without being asked. They can just be thankful for what they do for them on a daily basis, their teachers. You don't have to spend money to thank the Lord Amen. for his birthday coming down. So try to do his birthday blessings on a daily basis. And try to, whatever the Lord places on you, because each one is anointed with all the gifts that you have. Each one is anointed with lots of free gifts. And when you and the Lord and the Holy Spirit talk, that is when you get things done and accomplished in this, in this time. Another of the quotes that I get back to is this, the higher the climb, the better the view. Never be afraid, especially the younger ones and even older ones than me, to climb that extra step. What would I do if I get to do this something different? The higher the climb, the better the view. And I put this one even on Facebook because I try to work with Facebook here. The old lady tries to be tagged. <laughs> A lot of things I don't know what to call, but I put and it said, the la they laughed at me because I'm different. I said, but I laughed at them because they were all the same. Yes. So tend to be different because we're all created by a Heavenly Father and we're all different. He didn't make two but other than twins and they're still different. Yes. But he made you individually to be the best you can be, to know the best you know, to learn, to be different, to be the outer. Don't ever let bullies cut you down, never because you have to know who you are in Christ. And there are still adult bullies in this world, but don't let them win because Amen. the word says that every trial and tribulation, every battle are won, the word says, and the war, which is salvation. So just remember whose you are. I said every battle is won, every trial, every situation, plus the war, which is heaven. We'll be in heaven forever and ever and ever because of who we are because of who we are it says to handle yourself use your head it says to handle others use your heart Eleanor Roosevelt wrote that and said you believe you believe then you believe stronger than you seem you are smarter than you think it says do not go where the path may lead Go instead where there is no path and leave a trail. I like that. That's one of my favorite ones too. It says, do not go where the path may lead. Go instead where there is no path and leave a trail. Amen. Because we all have, we all have a trail to live. There is a purpose, a destiny in our lives that we might not see, 
because the enemy is trying to tell you that it's this little bitty, our path, that we're not good enough. The enemy is always trying to tell you, oh, you didn't have a college degree, you don't have, we have the best teacher. In one of my scriptures, it says that when you have the Holy Spirit, that's more teaching than you'll ever get on this earth. For free. For free. For free. So he can teach you everything. I'm going to go to the, uh, another anointing in 2 Corinthians 1, 21. Now it is God who makes us both, and you stand firm in Christ. He anointed us and set his seal of ownership on us. You stop and thought what it meant, a seal of ownership on us. And put his spirit in our hearts as a deposit guaranteeing what is to come. Wow, yeah. Man, that's... That's awesome. That's just awesome. What he put his seal of ownership on us and puts his spirit in our hearts as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. We've got it made. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow. No need to worry, people. Amen. Don't need to worry about anything. Anything. Anything going on in your lives, your children, your parents, anything. He's got it covered. He's got him taken care of it. Or he lies. But he's got integrity. He stands on what he is and what he's created. Yes, he amen. stands on and I have never known him to shy away from his word, his integrity. And this is one of the best ones. He says he sealed. He said he sealed of ownership on us. And puts his spirit in our hearts as a deposit. Guaranteeing what is to come. Stand on that. Whenever the going gets tough and the tough get going... You stand on what it is written and just know that you know. You don't have to worry. So set worry apart. You're not using that word today. You're not using it every day. Why? Because you know who you are in Christ. You know what the word says. You know you can bring it to a remembrance or write it down like me so you can look it up. And then you'll know you know of what is to come. The enemy is always trying to help you worry. You know, worry about this. Worry about somebody's health. Worry about your finances. Worry about neighbors. Worry about your work. Don't worry. God is taking care of our problems. We have to learn how to lean on Jesus and just let him take care yeah. of our problems. There was another time that we have problems with illness with one of our son-in-laws that I love to death on Pete's side. And he uh, was sick. The doctor said he might have cancer. And I said, no, he doesn't in Jesus' name. Amen. No, yeah. he doesn't. I said, Father God, I'm just going to lean on you. You fight this battle for us. I will keep joyful and peaceful doing what I'm supposed to do. We was counseling at home. Per, per, I had prayer meetings and Bible study at home on a one-to-one -one sometimes. And I just said, I am just going to go doing what you have destined me to be, knowing that you're going to fight this battle for us. And the enemy is under my feet. I will just praise and give you glory. Because you're taking care of the problem. I will not worry in Jesus' name. Yes. I didn't worry. I went on doing what I was supposed to do, God's destiny, with the learning, the teaching, the counseling. All of a sudden, the doctor, after a few weeks, he said, misdiagnosed. Amen. Thank you, Father. Praise your holy name. That's the King of King and Lord of Lord that I serve. That's who I want each one of you to know. You know or that you know who you are. That's how I want each one of you to learn, especially audio, video, who you are in Christ, to study the word. Even if it's just like my mother's little book that 15 minutes a day, you grow from glory to glory. You grow from miracles to miracles. You go from grace to grace. You go from every song that was sang this morning for each one of us to know who we are and just to lean back, let go in songs, he says, and let God. Let God be God and let you know what you're supposed to do and get done. In 1 John 2.20, it says on the anointing as well.
First John 2.20 says, But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and all of you know the truth. I do not write to you because you do not know the truth, but because you do know it, and because no lie comes from the truth. So you need to know. I'll read it again. But you have an anointing, each one of you, from the Holy One. And of all of the knowledge of the truth, which is the word, it says, I do not write to you because you do not know the truth, but because you do know it and because no lie comes from the truth. Whenever people try to lure your friends and, <coughs> and try to make you do what is wrong, you can always go and say, what does the word say that I'm supposed to do? Yes, Who yes, am yes. I supposed to go around with? What am I supposed to do? Like the luncheon last night, Pete was not asking me to go. I said, it would be nice if we went. But then when I do my teachings, I do fasting and praying. Not 40 days like our Lord. I do. I didn't have supper, didn't have breakfast. That's what I can do. That's what I'm going to do. And he honors that. He honors that. So I said, no, this is what we're going to know. Because you know the truth. You have to know this word, this manual. And I don't know all of it. I don't take pride in knowing all of it because, God forbid, if I knew it all, I'd be running against Trump or something. Or I mean, watch out, boy, watch out. But I don't know half of it. But what I do learn, the Holy Spirit teaches individual of, of us to know what to do where we're at. God meets us where we're at. You don't have to move to Timbuktu, to India, to Washington. God meets you where you're at. Yes, you and he'll have you grow like our pastors have been teaching us. Grow where you are planted. Go, grow where you are planted. There's a purpose in your life if you live here or wherever you live. Or people coming back like Daniel and his family coming back. There's a purpose. There's a destiny. So you have to find out what God wants from each one of you. In 1 John 2, 27 as well. There's another one about the anointing. And it says, as for you, the anointing you receive from him remains in you, and you do not need anyone to teach you. But at his anointing teaches you about all things, and as that anointing is real, not counterfeit, just as it has been taught you, remains in him. So, I could go on and on. If you just have to give me a week or a uh, you know, next time invite me for a week Katie but I just want to pray for you guys Father God I just bless each one of the homes represented here Father God each one of their hearts Father God just that your uh, destiny will be manifested Father God that everyone will be manifested Father God with anointing and, and authority that you have given us Father God and your destiny be manifested that you will say that they will say at night, thank you, Father, my, and he will say about us, my good and faithful servants. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. That was awesome.